yeah. like eight ones. He has like eight twos, and he has like. But when that's backing up four threes, condemned, it's hard to um, crank a ratchet on that high. When it's backing up four condemned, four day of judgment, though, it becomes a little bit more meaningful. Right. So I'm gonna actually say Bernat. I think is gonna win this yeah, round. Yeah. And uh, vampires we, versus Valakut. We said Valakut. Mm -hmm. And Valakut versus Blue White. The way he has this built. Blue White's typically favored, but Burnett only has two spreading C's and not a whole lot to bring in, and he's still got a ton of spot removal that wants to come out, so. Uh, possibly Valakut, but I mean, it, I it's could, definitely close. I could see Burnett winning this whole thing. When we get our opening hands, it looks like Burnett has a Jace, has a sufficient land. Now, uh, do we employ the, uh, the new rule, the Pro Tour rule? No, we do not. <laughs> I like that rule, though. It's an interesting rule. The uh, Pro Tour is recently employed, where a uh, person with the highest standings after the Swiss had, uh, gets to choose whether or not they want to play or draw. Throughout I like that rule a lot. So do I. Good rule. All right, no one drop for Boros. Burnett's definitely happy to see that. Yeah, Burnett has a Condemn and a Journey in his hand. And, we'll, we'll and a leak, a pierce, and a jace. Yeah. So what I see here, uh, Bernat clearly sees his lands as the aggressor in this matchup, and he's right. You know, his lands are what's going to be doing the aggression in this matchup for the most part. Preordain in hand. So it looks like Bernat is probably going to try and condemn this GOP and then like leak his follow-up maybe. I hope he does that. There we go. He's doing the right play there. And here's the 5-5. Five, five. Oh, going to respond to that fetch. Should have fetched main phase, but overall the life, the gaining two life probably won't matter that much. Yeah, not, it's not overly relevant. I mean, he's going to be pegging away with Squadron Hawks. Or he's probably going to be removing his library from the game of the Jace. I mean. Ben Robinson could double threat here afterwards and get one thing through, but there's still a point elim in Burnett's hand. That seems like a good thing to manly. Yep, I would agree with that one. Huge threat. Ben has two swords in his deck and adventuring gears and stuff. Those hawks. Yeah, those hawks are actually big. pretty big threats. And like right here, if you lay a Jace onto the table, if he has the land, yeah, it's pretty brutal. Just he does not here. have the land. It doesn't look like. It looks like he has he a does. Plant. Yeah, I think he does has he have it? in his hand. Yeah. Oh, he's thinking one, two, three, four, five. What happens if a bushwhacker comes down? Well, he also knows his opponent has Hero of Oxid Rage. He knows his opponent has Koth. He knows his opponent has. Yeah. You know, like he's he's seen the deck list. He knows the iterations of cards. And he, he he knows his opponent has twenty five lands, which means that he should be aware that it's likely that he can probably drop a four. I still like dropping the Jace. Yeah, Jace, Fate Seal, probably yourself. Because yeah. you don't necessarily know what your opponent needs. Absolutely. His opponent has so many cards in hand, a Fate Seal is not necessarily going to be very effective. Oh, other way around, though, I guess. Yeah, I would have liked the Fate Seal on the self there. Maybe he just wants some info. He left him with the Step Links. It's a pretty good one to leave you with. Mm, it's definitely reasonable. Going for the four here means uh, very likely... I mean, he's doing that before he does anything else, so... You gotta assume, especially after you draw, you drew a step length that he's gonna use all his mana this turn. Yeah. Here comes Koth, maybe. Oxid. Looks like a hero. Yeah, it's an Oxid. Down to one. Yeah, seems like Burnett's okay with that. Drew a mana leak this turn, so he gets the journey and mana leak. And he has a pretty good reason to believe that his opponent does not have a burn spell, because what I would have done if I had the burn spell, end of turn, cast the burn spell, follow up with the Oxid Ridge to kill the Jace. Right. He didn't do that, so it's probably not in his hand at all. That Killing that Oxid should be enough to keep his Jace going for a while. Jace is so good. It's okay. It's so frustrating to watch people play with it. I'm always like, man, whenever I play it, it's always so hard. <laughs> people always have such like, a board advantage. <laughs> I don't even have to work for it. Yeah. It's tough, though. Like, Jace and Gideon both, you know, going up to five loyalty or eight in Gideon's case, it's just so tough to kill. Yeah, you end up, like, 
it makes aggro decks just like really like you have to know when to sh switch gears like really well okay so he has a mana leak and does he have a condemn in his hand as well not sure about uh, that one. I'm not sure. I thought I saw a condemn, but I'm not uh, willing to bet money on that. Check. That seems like a leak worthy target. Well, Burnett has a squadron hawk of his own, too, oh, so he? he can match him. Okay. So the only thing that's really going to matter is the equipment. Totally fair. Thank you. Yep, and he lets it resolve. Burnett has a lot of patience. Yes, he is He is very willing to, to take some time with his, his game play. How it comes out, how it develops. Very meticulous. Everything is well planned. You know, most players, they have a mana leak, they would just mana leak the first spell possible. So here he is thinking. See the hands? Probably, let's see. Hand on fist, leaning forward. <laughs> A week is strong. That's <laughs> okay. For those of you who didn't hear Rashad at home, Rashad is reminding us that at the last Star City Games open in Indianapolis, Rashad um, remembers very clearly. Mike Bernat, top eight, losing in sudden death because came to time. These are timed rounds. And, well, blue-white is not particularly good at winning in sudden death unless it has life gain coming out real quick. Oh, God. <laughs> Here comes your first caw caw. Squadron Hawk with Jace is so dirty. It is really disgusting. Like, that's like living the dream. I remember when Squadron Hawk was printed, people basically said two things. They said, oh, that'll be so great when you use it with Jace. And then basically no one did it for a couple of months. Yeah. And then finally, somebody puts it together. Yeah. I mean, it's just really, really sick. Uh, just to clarify before, uh, leaning forward, and when you're touching your face, it's a sign of uh, weakness, as far as poker tells go. I mean, uh, it's clearly not a sign of weakness right now, but just in general. When you see that, don't be like, oh man, he's got it all. <laughs> I can't play around anything, because normally, if somebody's touching their face or leaning forward, they've, they've got absolutely nothing. You can just combo them right in the dome. Bolts. Target it, pointing it at the Jace, even though that's not where it's pointed yet. Jace has done his work. Are his last two cards Squadron Hawks? Um, I think so. No, he, he has one Squadron Hawk in the bin. He don't encounter. Oh right, in the game. okay. So he does. Yeah. He has one in his hand. Yeah, his Squadron Hawk. Squadron X, Hawk X. X. Preordain. On one side of the table, we have five lands from Blue White, a Squadron Hawk, and a Journey to Nowhere where holding off a Hero of Oxidridge. On the other side, we have five lands and two Squadron Hawks. A sixth land from Mike Bernat is Celestial Colonnade. Hero would be fantastic right now if it wasn't under that journey. <laughs> Popping up the Hawks, getting past your opponent's Hawks. He's got another Hero in his deck. He does have two? He's two heroes, one cough. Hero's really good. Okay. We're not just letting the game play out slow. It's how he wants this game to proceed. His life total. Look at that life total. It's yeah. pristine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have this feeling that... Uh, if Burnett was, if he had a sack land in his deck, I'm not sure if he has that in his deck, that he might just pointedly not sacrifice it just to make sure he had a flawless victory. Those flawless victories are important. True. Sure. 
You know the funniest when uh, when you get the flawless victory on somebody, or like the perfect when you play Street Fighter at the arcade. Did you guys go to arcades when you were a kid? Oh yeah. Yeah, and like they would like put in more quarters to play against you again. You're like, really? Like you <laughs> you want to <laughs> run this back? Like this? I just hey, I, I just ran so man. well for you. <laughs> well, sometimes you want to learn against a master like yourself, though. I just remember like as Goblin a kid, like, guy thinking that down. was one of the funniest things. When I'd like perfect somebody and they just put more money in. He's got that sack land hanging out that can make his geopede into a 3-3 three -three at any time. Doing a little bit of counting, but basically there's a celestial colonnade over there that can come up and have another mana free to cast a uh, mana leak or the fear of a deprive, which Mike Burnett does have in his deck. Here they come. Reveals Stoic Rebuttal. Huh. Now, Mike has a Gideon in his hand, too. Oh my so, god. Yeah, he's going to... Uh... I would not want to be sitting in Ben Robinson's seat right now. No, no, no. I mean, it's... It's an interesting point, though, that... Uh, you know, Mike kind of gave himself a dead mental leak. Like, the mental leak's really... I guess he needs to dodge. Like, there, there are one-ofs that are extremely dangerous for him. Now, um, importantly, Mike Burnett is apparently rooting for the Packers tomorrow. Seems like there's a lot of that going on in this top eight. Ben Robinson, the Packers. Brandon Nelson, the Packers. A couple um, of people said they are going to be playing Legacy yeah. instead. So. Uh, Drew Levin is rooting for Legacy. I am with <laughs> Drew Levin. <laughs> Same. Uh, Matthew Landstrom rooting for Legacy, and then Packers, Brewers from Chris Anderson. Chris Anderson has <laughs> Marlins crossed out, and then he put Brewers. <laughs> <laughs> and then another Packers fan. Another Packers that. fan. So five for Packers, two for Legacy, one for Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the uh, the Goblin Guide being blocked by the Celestial Colonnade. There's blue, blue available to hold back for the Mana Leak. The crack on the uh, sack land means he's going to hit for four, finally reducing Mike Bernard's life total. Five. Or for five, my bad, thank you. No, no, um, for, for three. I don't think he, uh, oh, okay, yeah, I sure. don't think that was, he, so it's for three. We're all wrong. Yeah, dur dur dur. I like how you play arc trail and you can just like move it around on the table and people just know what you mean. Did did Burnett have a leak or a deprive or something? He did not have a deprive, but I thought he had a leak. He did have a no, leak. No, he used that leak on that step links a while ago. Gideon. Oh, it was a stoic for a long time, babe. Yeah, it was two That's stoics, expected. I think. Uses Gideon to shoot down the GOP. And without a cough? Or without a hero of Oxid Ridge, that Gideon will live. Oh, now Gideon is a monster. He's fogging every turn. With Stoic Rebuttal in hand, if not Stoic Rebuttals. <laughs> Caw. Is blue white deck? <laughs> yeah. I should play decks like this, man. <laughs> <laughs> Burnett definitely built his deck to be good against creatures, so it's no surprise that this game is going the way it is. Light twitch of his finger as he contemplates where the block will be. Sacks the land to the step links. Try to 
really get that Gideon down. Gideon by far has been the card from Blue White that has made me cringe more than anything else when I'm playing an aggressive deck. Yep, definitely agree. I love me some Gideon. I mean, when it comes down to just with the red deck that I've been playing in standard, if I look at my matchups versus blue white, it's basically two things. If they play Gideon, I've got about a 20% matchup, and if they don't, I've got about an 80% matchup. <laughs> and it's literally the case when I look at the numbers. Caught down, takes one for the team. Hawk, right? That is the last hawk. The last hawk, one card in hand, and uh, he put puts it up in the air because Mike Burnett probably asked how many cards left <laughs> before I cast this Day of Judgment in my hand with my seven other cards in my hand, or is that twelve other cards? I can't quite yeah, tell. It's it's all about the same. Yeah, I mean, he can dice when I'm getting in now. I uh, maybe he doesn't though. I, I think he probably wants to keep Stoic Mana open. I agree with that. Yeah. That's reasonable. He's a Jace, so you'd have a little bit of gamble. There's no reason to, though. I don't think Burnett is a man who has gamble. <laughs> he there, is. there are ways that he can play this game where he does not have to gamble on Jacing into yeah, another yeah. blue uh, blue source. See the the look right now he's giving? He's blinking his eyes, collating, collating, collating. You can see uh, back there behind him is Midwest legend Michael Pern. Michael Pern, well known for stocking up people with uh, infinite foil decks, if yep. you're one of his friends. Been there, done that. <laughs> also the infamous um, $10 space that was sold. That sold. You've told... <laughs> I would not pay for face fighters. I have enough face fighters as it is. Why, did nobody have them? Yeah, just Ravnica. I mean, I have, I have hundreds of face fighters. <laughs> So. Okay, in for one on Gideon. It's so hard to kill Gideon. <laughs> Once you're behind a Gideon, it's just getting out from under it is practically impossible. That hawk is trying so hard. And Mike Bernat even has a condemn in his hand, so let's pretend some sort of crazy thing happens where we get runner, 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 runner from Ben that tears out this other stuff, and he finally gets in something. I mean... This game is over. It's just a question of how long it takes Bernat to do the work. Right. And, just like I said, as soon as he drew his fourth blue source, cast yeah. Jace without hesitation. Waited for him to have counterman open. This is an interesting situation where you have Jace and they have two fetch lands and you fate seal them. Do you just snap, leave whatever card is on top on top? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I got to do that to VD in the top eight of the Legacy Open in San Jose. That was awesome. Like killing him with Jace, I'm like, oh, you have a Jace on top. Yeah, leave that there. <laughs> Cracked his vegetable, and he's just like, no, what have I done? No, is that a. It's a Journey of Bolt in a Mountain. Ugh. <laughs> Not the best card. <laughs> right. We're in another room from where the, um, the game is being played, and we've had a couple people poke their head in, look at us, and shake their head because they know it's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just wondering what's going on. I mean, Did Burnett go through all of his hawks? Yes. All right, Burnett just uh, brainstorm. So having gone through all of his hawks, 
I mean, he can easily, at a certain point, kill his opponent with Gideon. He's got plenty of time to kill his opponent with Jace. I mean, pretty much, we're just in the don't do anything really dumb phase of the game. Yep. I think he's got enough where he can swing with Gideon this turn. Yeah. Yep, yeah. And there it goes. Attack for six. Finally get this party started. Yeah. And Ben draws another fetch land. He's actually outlanding the blue-white control deck. With his Boros yeah. deck. To be fair, the blue-white deck only has one extra land, but... Is that an Elspeth to roll? That was an Elspeth. <laughs> Another card that Burnett doesn't really need. Yeah. Just brainstormed into another Deprive, so he's got three hard counters in his hand, and his opponent is sitting on actual nothing. Here he comes. <laughs> Take six. And I... Yeah, Burnett has to discard because he has too many sweet spells. Ben draws another fetch land. Yeah. Well, Scoops him up. There we go. <laughs> That's what we want to see at this point. Just next game. All over but the crying. Yeah, post board, uh, Ben's going to pick up some more copies of Kafka at the hammer. And he's also going to pick up some Phyrexian Revokers. Those will all be pretty good here. The Revokers less so, but. Well, he knows Adrian has a t or, um, <laughs> I'm like reading over here, looking at Adrian. But he knows Burnett has a, a ton of ratchet bombs and stuff, and he has Gideon and Elspeth, like all cards are. Oh yeah, I mean down. he's definitely bringing the Revoker, but it's gonna be Koth of the Hammer, Revoker, and I don't know if anything else makes the ma manages to make the cut. Yeah, that's about it. He has Act of Treason, Tunnel Ignis. Cards are just not very good, but he wants to side out Journey, Arc Trail, Lightning Bolt. I mean, he might keep in Lightning Bolt just as a, yeah, as, a, a as a reach to try to finish off. A lot of people typically do that, too. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what he could t what he's bringing in in those spots. Like, I mean, Koth, he's bringing, is, the, well, Koth, is, Koth is the only clear... And Revoker, yeah. Well, Revoker is definitely coming in. Um... Michael Bennett here. He has uh, an extra copy of. Uh, he has two Ratchet Bombs, two Core Firewalkers, extra Condemn. Uh, I mean, and an extra Day of Judgment. I mean, board. basically, after board, the way that this match plays out is where it was bad before, it becomes terrible. Yeah, it becomes miserable, miserable bad. And Bernat knows that the only card to really fear from his opponent is probably Cough. <laughs> So when we're looking at um, the rest of the, the sideboard here, I mean, the cards you don't like are Arc Trail, Journey to Nowhere, right? That's yes, four Arc Trail, cards. Journey to Nowhere. So that gives you the two cough, and I guess just two Revoker to turn off uh, Jace, turn off Gideon, maybe. Yeah, and, and Ratchet Bomb, and, yeah. you know, it's, it, that, that card is definitely a card that comes in. That's a solid four, of four, four in, four out. I mean, this looks bad. <laughs> bad. Mike Burnett gets so much stuff post board. Looks like I'm being pulled away. My, my right. teams are leaving. Uh, Jerry's off. Drew Levin is on the top four, as is Chris Anderson. Thank you very uh, much. He's in the same car, in the same house. So, Drew Levin, playing Red Green Valakut, is uh, into the top four now. So is Chris Anderson playing Cadaltha Red. Uh, they live in the same house, and they came in the same car, and they're playing against each other in the top four. It's a pretty, pretty fun fact. There were 500 people in a tournament. It's pretty crazy when things like that happen. Yeah, 544 competitors and two friends, two roommates, make it all the way here. 
And, you know, at a certain point, one of the things you hear a lot at Magic tournaments is, oh, I can't believe I had to pay, play somebody I know. Well, when you've been playing the game for as long as a lot of people have, it's inevitable. But yeah. it's really great when that person you know, it's in the top eight, it's in the top four. Yeah, you have so much fun. Like, the, the finals of Worlds this year was one of the most fun matches I've gotten to watch in a really long time. Like, two best friends battling it out in the finals of Worlds. How sick is that? That would just be so great. I mean, yeah, it's the most fun yeah. ever. And we're going finally to the shuffle. I like these Nicole Balas leaves. Nicole Balas is uh, my favorite first pick in cube. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the best first pick you can make, but it's my favorite first pick. Honestly, I would say that Nicole Bolas, in many ways, very well represents what it's like to play against Mike Bernat. <laughs> So uh, Rashad is uh, about to give away three months of premium at the end of this match. So make sure you stay on the chat and uh, stay, stay on the tw on the Twitter too, right? Or is it just the chat? Uh, oh, do we're it, doing it via not Twitter. via the chat, I via apologize. Twitter. Yeah. Sorry, last time we did it via chat. Uh, again, this is uh, Jacob Van Loon, and I'm here with Adrian Sullivan, and we're in Indianapolis for the Star City Games Open Series Standard event. Uh, right now we're watching a top eight match. This is the quarterfinals. This is Michael Bernat. He's up a game playing blue-white control against Ben Robinson, who is playing Burroughs. Ben Robinson's deck looks really cool. He has cards like Mirror Crusader and Sword of Beast and Famine. Uh, he also has Hero of Oxen Ridge. He's got a lot of cards for Mirrodin Besiege. That's pretty exciting. Michael Bernat, on the other hand, he is playing a traditional Kogo deck, which is actually tuned to beat creature decks. Yeah, hardcore so tuned. <laughs> this is uh, very bad for Ben Robinson. In fact, I, I don't think it gets much worse than this. Like if I, if I got to bring a personal 75 designed to beat Burroughs, it probably wouldn't look more than two cards different than how Michael Bernard's yeah. deck looks post yeah. Part of the reason it's so particularly bad is that Mike Bernat's deck has the, the paralyzing combination of point and click single creature Elim spells in abundance, and then and with Day of Judgment and Gideon. That is a combination that is really hard to beat when you're a creature deck. It's rough because, you know, he can't not overextend because then he's, the game gets completely out of his hands. And if he does, he just loses to days. So. You know, I, I feel like the ways that he wins this game involve Mike Burnett stumbling hard on mana. Like having a three mana hand, three land in his opener, and then just not finding a land for several turns. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's much of a way Mike loses this one. He's also, I, he's I, got I'm, the, I guess you're right. Though. I'm just talking yeah. about what the situation is in which he might lose. Yeah, no, and I'm, I'm sure he can lose. Like, the stranger things have happened in Magic. I remember uh, watching a Kami of the Crescent Moon deck steal a game in... Uh, do you remember that? Team and, uh, Constructed? It was, uh, I think it was Pro Tour Honolulu. Oh, yeah, Actually, yeah. Uh, the Faith's better Pro Tour. <laughs> okay, we got yeah. the opening hand there. I think I see three land, Mana Leak. Uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor, a Condemn. Condemn. Mm -hmm. On the other side of the table, I think I see Goblin Guide turn one. Here we go. That is what he wants to see. Deprive is revealed. Mountain Goblin Guide, that is one of the paths for victory here. If he can follow it up with another Goblin Guide, that's the kind of draw he might want to have. Okay, some other good threat, like a plated Geopede would be good. He's got a Lynx, a Lynx is solid, and he says go. Ooh, no white, no white source, that is very... Okay, there's a sack land for the white, but now he's going to be playing into a Mana Leak. So he holds off for one more turn just so that he can play around it. Shuffling that condemned goblin guide back into the mix. Dropping most likely a step links.
To which Burnett says, okay. <laughs> sure. And, you know, laying a Jace here and uh, bouncing, the bouncing the step links isn't terrible normally, but remember his opponent could have two Coths, could have, uh, actually three Coths, could have the, the Heroes of Oxid Ridge, so 